So anyway, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I know some more people will continue to keep jumping on. Um, welcome to the Lisa Parento team uh, monthly mastermind. Uh, we try to bring amazing folks and some tools, tips, takeaways always to help us grow our business, become better realtors. And um, it's just, you know, I cannot be more excited. I was saying before you came on, this is going to be my very favorite mastermind I've ever done. Uh, because Elizabeth, Elizabeth Riley, you are such a mentor to me. You are such an amazing beacon, uh, not only in EXP, but also just in the world of real estate. Um, the way you walk in the world in terms of your philanthropy, your generosity, your kindness, your care for others uh, is absolutely amazing to me. And I'm so grateful that you're here today with us. Um, so I'd love to just introduce you a little bit, I mean, I or, or hardly, and then you know, maybe have you talk to us a little bit about your career in real estate, your journey to EXP, but then I think most importantly for this call, I love the piece that you do in the world where you really talk about some real tangible stuff that you do with your sphere that you've done that are doable, that people can take away from this call today and put into action this afternoon. So if that sounds good to you, I would love to get started and um, let me introduce everyone to the amazing Elizabeth Riley from the uh, Austin Market and EXP colleague of ours. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. Thank you for having me. And it's always like, oh, I hope I add some value when you say things like that. So, um, <laughs> well, so yes, I'm Elizabeth. I've been in the business 17 years. I was with Keller Williams for the first 10 of those years. I got started in Atlanta, Georgia. And then in 2008, my husband was tra transferred to Austin, Texas. And so I became a top producer in Atlanta. Uh, and then when I moved here, I didn't know anybody. So I had to start over again. And if, if any of y'all were in real estate in 2008, um, then you know that it was a little bit challenging. But for me, I, always, I don't know. It's like we can focus on the challenging or we can focus on the opportunity. And so for me, it was opportunity. And I didn't know anybody. I had one child at the time. I now have four. And we had to just meet people. I had to meet people anyway for him and, and to get us all um, integrated into the Austin area. And my husband traveled a ton. So um, we, I just jumped in and I built my business here in Austin and uh, in 2014. So I was at Keller Williams in both, both states. And in 2014, we had 650 agents in my market center and I was number one. Um, my business has always been referral based. It's hundred percent referral. And the funny thing about that is I never followed my numbers. I didn't know where my stats were. I didn't know where I ranked. I usually ranked in the top 10. Um, I'm super competitive with myself, not really anybody else. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I was just like, oh, when we had that awards, I was like, okay, number 10, nine, eight. And they're naming everybody. I was like, how, how did I not even make the top 10 this year? You know, uh, I guess I wasn't focused and all of a sudden they get to number one and they're like Elizabeth Riley. And I was like, okay, uh, that's kind of cool. So the interesting thing about that though, is uh, I came home after I won number one and I told my husband I was getting out of the business. And he said, are you crazy? Like you just won. And I said, no, you know, because for me at Keller Williams, if any of y'all were at Keller Williams, it was all about God family business in that order. And that year for me, it was all business and God and family were some down, somewhere down below. And that I just had a struggle with that. And I was burned out and I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. And it was very corporate. And I just felt like, I feel like if you do what you love, it's not really a job, right? If you do what you love doing and I didn't love doing it anymore. And so um, it wasn't really worth the the sacrifices that I was making. And so my husband said, well, start your own brokerage. I said, absolutely not. I don't want to be boss. I don't, you know, I'm boss of team Riley. I do not want to be boss. I don't want, I'm not Catholic y'all, but I have Catholic guilt, right? So if somebody didn't have a deal or they're, they couldn't pay their rent or their mortgage, I would feel guilty about that. I don't want that responsibility. I like to collaborate, but I don't want to be boss, right? So um, my Atlanta partners are from Keller Williams. They were really good friends of mine. They had been calling me about this little company called EXP Realty. And I'm like, I don't know anything about it. And the company only had 400 agents nationally at that time, which my market center had more than this company. But I, I valued my relationship with them and I valued how we could all work together. And I didn't really understand anything about EXP, but they said, would you meet with somebody? And it's kind of like if Lisa asked me to meet with somebody, you don't really ask questions. You're like, sure, I'm happy to meet with, you know, because Lisa's not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste her time. You know what I mean? So um, I said, sure, I'm happy to meet with anybody. And so Glenn Sanford came into Austin 
and met with me. And again, he only had 400 agents at that time. And here's the cool thing. If any of y'all have met Glenn, you know, he's such a humble, generous, visionary person, right? Just that's who he is. That same Glenn Sanford is the same Glenn Sanford I met. And the only difference now is his, his, his worth on paper, right? Because he was that same person. And I really truly believe people join people. And I loved his vision. He talked about as a top producer, you know, what are you being awarded with? And I was like, well, I have 10 baseball caps from Keller Williams that say capper. Y'all, that's not going to pay my bills. You know, that's not, it wasn't even my color. It didn't look good on me. I don't even wear baseball caps, but um, that's not going to pay my mortgage. That's not going to help me retire. That's not going to help me with colleges. And so he talked about the stock. And Glenn Stam- he actually told me about RevShare. He goes, you'll love RevShare. I was like, I am not interested in RevShare. Flat out told him that because I was so used to the KW model. I said, I am excited about building my business. I'm excited about stock. We're being, you're being called the amazon.com of real estate. So what if, right? Instead of focusing on the, what if it doesn't work, let's focus on the opportunity. I mean, what if, what if I knew about amazon.com when it first came out? I think all of us would have jumped on that or bought stock or done something, right? Um, Cause they never knew that was going to happen. And so I said, well, I just love people and let me do uh, let me see what I can do here. I'm bored and uninspired. So join EXP. Um, first full year at the company, we now had 2000 agents. I was number one. Second full year at the company, we had 5000 agents and I was number one. And I had to step back and say, what is different? I'm still the same person. I'm still approaching my business in the same way. But how did I go from bored uninspired, ready to get out of the business at 650 agents, but I'm thriving at 5,000 and I'm having more fun than I ever had before. Right. And it's, it it goes back to the people. And when you own something, you're more invested, you're more excited about it. And I was an owner in this company. Um, Not to mention we were having so much fun growing this. We had no idea what, um, and I know this isn't an attraction conversation, but we had no idea what what we were doing. I mean, we were putting the tracks in front of the train as quickly as possible, but um, I also highly believe in seeking wise counsel. And I'm one of those people that leap of faith and I'll figure it out. And so, but I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. So I didn't know uh, Jason guessing came into town and I, I'd never been anywhere, but KW, I didn't know what this looked like. I didn't know what the possibilities were. So I went to my old team leader that I trusted that I knew that I could talk to in confidence without my license getting sent back or something happening. Um, He had retired from KW after 20 something years. He owned seven market centers in a region. He used to own uh, real estate independent companies and Remax and things like this. He owned all this stuff. And so I knew that he could tell me what I wasn't asking and telling me what I needed to explore further. And and he had retired. And so um, I went to him. We explored the model for five months together asking lots of questions. And he came to me one day and said, you know what? I'm bored. I'm uninspired. Let's do this. I'm coming out of retirement. Let's, let's grow this company together and get involved. And that was Gene Frederick. So my, my point of saying that is you never know the conversations you're going to have, right? I never approached Gene thinking he would ever want to come to this little tiny company. Um, but just as I was bored and uninspired, like there was a spark and an excitement and that's what happened. And so that was 400 agents ago. I mean, 400 agents, I'm 466 and we're now at what, 82,000. And so it's been amazing. Um, But with all of that, Gene kind of focused on attraction. I focused on icon. That was a big deal for me. Um, For me, that's how I attract. If I'm building a big business, people watch me because that's what we are, y'all. We're a real estate company. Nobody understands stock or ref share or any of that kind of stuff. I don't talk about EXP. I've got one of the biggest organizations, but I attract because I built a big business because of EXP. Um, and so I was the first icon ever named. And I'm the only one with seven icons. And I'm on my way to my eighth, although I don't care about icon anymore. So what I'm doing is giving my business to others to help them build and grow because I love lifting others as they climb. So if I make it to number eight, I make it to number eight. But it, it's that's not fulfilling to me anymore. Just f- focusing on my clients and focusing on my business and treating my agents and my clients like they're my one and only is really what I do. Um, so that's kind of my story. Uh, last year, I, I, I talk about comparison kills joy all the time. I 
don't know I'm competitive with myself. And I'm always wanting to be better than what I did the year before, but I have no idea whatever the other people are doing. I have no idea what is in, what is considered good production or bad production or a lot of transactions or not. Um, so I don't know where I fit in all that, but just so you kind of know my production level. Um, last year, I did 38 mil, uh, 35 million in transactions and um, or in, a G, in volume and uh, 70 transactions. And then I realized I don't need to do 70 transactions, right? So this year, what I've been doing is every single client and every single deal I'm on, I have another agent on it with me because now they're learning, they're shadowing a top agent, they're getting commissions, they're building their business instead of just sitting in front of a computer or reading a book, because you all know that it's much more impactful if you're in it every day to day. And so um, that's what's happening here. And it's been fun and it's freeing me up to go speak around the country or go do whatever I want. And, you know, I'm taking the month of July off with my family. Like it's, that's freedom for me. So freedom for somebody else might be a little bit different, but that would not have been possible if it weren't for the business this company has allowed me to build. So um, that's my story in a, in a nutshell, Lisa, I hope that's what you're wanting me to share. That was amazing, amazing, amazing. And just, you know, saying, and so I'm gonna take the month of July off with my family. Um, that's just so it's so sweet. That's so amazing because your kids are just at that age where I don't think any of them are like, I'm sorry, you're not cool enough. I'm not going to go hang out with you. Like they're almost to that age. No, my 13 year old is she is totally like, <laughs> don't don't let her fool you. But, you yeah. know, but it looks like I mean, the family, you know, seeing all six of you and in, in, in the, you know, at all the places that you've been, I just think, you know, and it's not like you're spoiling them either. It's just that quality face-to-face -face, being present with your family that's so beautiful and it, it is because of the freedom that, that you've gained and also the contributions that you make so that's amazing um, but now if you wouldn't mind shifting gears and kind of um, you know giving us a little bit of that I love the piece that you do in EXP world where you really talk about some tangible stuff that you do with your sphere and I'd love everybody on the call uh, we're close to 30 now um, to be able to have some great takeaways and stuff as I said that we can put into action this afternoon um, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of y'all might be like, okay, that is so goofy, but it works for me, right? And you just have to figure out what works for you and and do it. Um, I was told early on that if I wanted to be successful in this company or not this company in this no. business, I had to oh, that's fine. knock on doors or cold call. Y'all, that is not me. First of all, I hate talking on the phone. I don't even talk on the phone to my family because I'm like, what do you need? Just give me the give me the details and let me go on my way. Right. Um, so I had to figure out what was, what was going to work for me and me just loving on the people that already know me, like me and trust me. NAR statistics show that 83% of agents do not stay in touch with their past clients. That's insane to me. You've already worked with them. You've got them through their biggest transaction. You've helped them. They trust you. They know you. Why aren't those people being touched and loved on? Right. So I just treat people the way I want to be treated. And, and it's all about consistency. I don't care what you're doing. It, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I use the word cheap. My husband says, say frugal, but it's cheap. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of money because it's going to the trash can. They're not going to save your stuff, right? And I think a lot of agents focus too much on getting ready to get ready or, or putting all this money and time and effort and, and cost into it. And it's like, you just want to make an impact on the way to the trash can. Right. So um, what I do is is pretty easy in my world. I think uh, I touch my clients 36 times a year. Now, if you think about that, that sounds like a lot. You're like 36. That's overwhelming. Right. Um, and I, I think big picture. But now let's let's break it down a little bit. That's three times a month. OK, great. How many of y'all are how many of y'all are? Well, most of y'all's cameras are off. But do a lot of y'all stay in touch with your clients on a consistent basis? OK. Okay. And, right. It's hard. It's very, very hard because we get busy. Um, but if you break it down, so some of y'all that aren't doing anything, just say one a month. That's more than what you're doing now. And it's going to make an impact. Right. So even if you touch them anywhere between 12, I like even, I like the easy numbers, 12, 24, 36, it doesn't matter. I'm starting to touch mine more 24 because I think everybody gets bombarded with things. But what I do every December, it's super easy. I just take a piece of paper, I write down this, the 12 months and besides each month, I write one, two, three. And each month I will send a direct mail piece of some sort. And I'll give you guys some ideas on what I do there. 
um, a direct mail piece and I will send a newsletter, electronic newsletter, and I will reach out to them for coffee or lunch or just connecting with them, whether it's phone or text. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't call them. I just text them. All right. I have an app that I use and I'll tell you about that too, but um, I just text them and say, hey, I uh, haven't seen you. Okay, this is, this is what I say a lot of times, okay? Oh my gosh, Allie, it's been forever. I was in your neighborhood. Okay, y'all, I haven't been in Allie's neighborhood, but it sounds good, right? I was in your neighborhood and I thought about you. How have you been? The girls are getting so big. I would love to catch up for lunch or coffee sometime soon. Allie might not be available for lunch or coffee soon, but it's still a touch. She's like, oh my gosh, great to hear from you, right? It's still a touch. You're still, you're, you're building that relationship. I believe that if you earn the relationship, then you have the right to ask for the business. I think sometimes too many people just go in there for the business, but they haven't really figured out what those people want or really built the relationship. And so uh, I like that relational more than the transactional. So let's go back to kind of um, what I do with the, the touches. I do not send just listed, just sold, um, open. I don't send any of the real estate related types of um, direct mail pieces. And here's the reason why. First of all, my business is 100% referral. So my clients are all over the place. If I sell a house in Cat Mountain, but my client out in Lakeway, which is 40 minutes away, they don't care. They don't care that I listed a house in a neighborhood that has nothing to do with them, completely different zip code, completely different area. So I'm spending time, money, and effort for something that's not going to be very effective, right? Just sold. Well, then if you forget to send all the other ones, or what if you just sell one house a year? Then it doesn't, that's not very impactful either. They're like, oh, awesome. I don't want to call Elizabeth because uh, she only sells one house a year, right? They don't know. It's again, you just want that perception and make sure that you're always in front of them. What I do is I send them things that are going to make them want to open what I have. What's she doing this month? Oh, Elizabeth's clever or getting engagement with them. So one of the things I do every January is I write a, a personal letter to a friend and it's like a, a state of the market, if you will, Okay. Hi, Jill. It was so great. Like, what a great year. Happy New Year, whatever it is. And I talk all about them. How was your family? Whatever. And it's general, but it's not right. And then I talk about my family. Well, we got, you know, trip is in, you know, June in sophomore, and this is what we're doing. And I cannot believe we're getting to this place. Da, 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 da. And then I'll talk about my business a little bit because I don't ever lead with my business. I don't send stuff saying, I'm a seven time icon. I sold this much amount of real estate. I did this. I did this. I did this because what's the common denominator? I, nobody cares. It's when you start focusing on them, that's when they listen and they care. But I do want them to know I'm good at what I do. So I will bury in there a couple of bullet points, right? Um, you know, professionally, 2021 20, was a great year for me. Um, I was able to help 70 families find a home, right? I'm not talking about my, first of all, if I said I sold 35 million, they're going to do do, do do times 3% and they're going to assume, oh, she makes, you know, I, this is what she's making. They're already calculating your commissions, right? It's not about the money. And I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, she, she has plenty of clients. She doesn't need my business. But if you say I got to serve, I was so blessed to serve 70 families. I'm so excited to serve, you know, more families in the new year, whatever. Um, and if I didn't have the opportunity to work with you this past year, I, I'm excited to, to earn the right and earn the opportunity to work with you or, or any of your referrals in the future. You see what I mean? It's just, it's just the choice of words and the choice of language. How can you serve? Um, and so I put that in there. Now, what I did do, and this is a really popular thing for me. Now I'm going to say full disclosure because I always get pushback on this. All of your states are different in what they require on any of your marketing. So whatever you're doing, making make sure you have all of your broker, EXP, whatever you need on your marketing stuff, because Texas might be very different. So one thing that I did now, again, I told you everybody is going to throw things away. But if I'm going to do a marketing piece, I want something that's going to make an impact that they might save. So Canva is my friend. If you don't know Canva, use Canva. It's free. What I do in that letter is I Canva is my friend and I go into Canva and I make a business card size that says um, $500 voucher. Compliments of Elizabeth Riley Lux Property Group. Transferable to friends, families, or used for a future, whatever, transaction. Um, 
and it's just a business card size. And it doesn't matter. It could be $500. It can be $200. It can be a hundred dollars. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the value, right? It's just, again, the perception. They're like, oh, wait, this is something I want to hold on to. And so I print those off and they hold on to that and they keep those and then they can share them with other people. It doesn't really cost you anything up front. And then when they close the transaction, then you just credit them on the settlement statement, hundred dollars, $500, right? Money well spent. Um, and I've had clients that have held on to them for a couple of years and they're like, oh, I found this. Can I use this? Absolutely. I want them to use something and they hold on to it because it's small. It's a business card size. It's not a piece of paper that's going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, so that's really, really easy. And that's something that um, I do that that has a little bit of sticking power. Right. It's a little bit more sticky and it stays around. So February is a little more expensive. And I'm just going to share with you all some of the most um, popular ones, I guess I've done. But Girl Scout cookies is another one. This one's a little bit more expensive. Um, I go to um, the, the Girl Scout troop leaders in the school and I say, give me a list of all your Girl Scouts that are selling cookies. And they're like, oh, great. OK, sure. Why? And now here's my opportunity to let people know I'm an agent. You don't want to be a secret agent. You're having these conversations. You're wanting to put people in your database. Right. And so I get to tell the troop leaders because I'm a real estate agent and I buy cookies and I give them to all of my clients. Uh, and as a thank you. So they have thanks a lots that are really, really cool. Now on the thanks a lots, I will get a sticker and I will get cookies for everybody in the school as far as like uh, staff, teachers, staff, whatever. And that's about $80, I mean, 80 people. And so I'll put a sticker on there. I'm not asking for their business. I'm thanking them. Okay. Again, I'm serving them and I'm just putting it out there. I'm being very passive in my marketing. And I'll say, thank you for everything you do for our schools and our community you are appreciated, XOXO, Elizabeth with the Lux Property Group. But they're called thanks a lot. And so I just put that sticker in there and then I put them in all the, in all the teacher boxes. Um, but then what I do is I go to each of the Girl Scouts, moms, and I say, hey, you have a Girl Scout. I um, want to buy a case of cookies. And it doesn't have to be a case, y'all. Figure out what your database is. Figure out if it's your top 100 people, if it's your top 10 people, if it's your cheerleaders, it doesn't matter. I treat all of my people in my database the same just because that's easy for me. Um, and then I go to the moms. I'm like, I need a case. They're like a case. You want to buy a case? Yes. First of all, they want to know why. Oh, I'm in real estate. I give them all to my clients, yada, yada, yada. Number two, they're thrilled because that's one less case that they have to sell <laughs> with their girls. Um, and number three, you're just, again, not being a secret agent. So they buy a case from every single Girl Scout. OK, um, if you don't know Girl Scouts or if you don't have kids in the schools in, in Texas anyway, they they set up outside of the um, grocery stores or everywhere selling them. So you can go up there and say, hi, you know, I'm Elizabeth Riley. I'm a real estate agent here in Austin. I would love to buy a case of cookies from your girls. And they're like, what? Oh, yeah. And you start talking to me. You're building that relationship and you get that contact information. Right. So there's ways to meet people, even if you don't have the direct contacts. Um, and then what we do is I have four children and they're the Lux squad. They all have t-shirts that say Lux squad. Um, they wanted it to say Lux uh, child labor squad. And I <laughs> made them take out the child labor, uh, but they all have t-shirts. And so what they do is they're my little helpers. And we put ribbons on the um, Girl Scout cookies and put a little card or my business card on it. And then we make it a fun, fun family affair and we put them all in the car. And I usually do 350 cookies. And we put them on everybody's door. Now, the reason I put them on the door is number one, I treat people the way I want to be treated. I don't want to start talking to somebody. If I, if somebody shows up at my door that I don't want to talk to, I don't want to feel obligated to talk to them. I don't want to interrupt somebody. And quite frankly, time is precious. I don't have time to stand and talk to 350 people. And I don't want to, I'm much more of an introvert than people think I am. Right. Um, and then the thing is I have this mom guilt. So if I'm doing my work stuff, but I'm not doing stuff with my kids, okay, how can I integrate them? So then I'll have my kids in there and their friends do this too. The friends all have shirts too. And uh, I'll say, okay, Levi, your turn. Let's see how fast you can go put this cookie on the door. So they go and they run up there and they put the cookie with the little ribbon on the doorknob and they run back and I time them. Okay, Tate, your turn. Let's see if you can beat Levi's time. All right, Lexi, it's your turn, right? So they make it fun. Um, it's expensive. It's a lot of work, but the reason I still do it is every single year without fail, I will have clients call me and say, are you doing Girl Scout cookies this year? If so, can I get thin mints? I'm like, okay. 
right? You want to be memorable. And they're thinking about me for their Girl Scout cookie, you know, order. So that's why I do it. So those, that one's a little bit more expensive, but again, you don't have to buy 350 cookies. Go to your, go to your last, you know, five client. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that much because Girl Scout cookies, I think are like $404 a box now. Um, March is super easy. Uh, I love college basketball. My dad played for Indiana state and uh, I love March madness. So if you go to cbssports.com, I don't care if you like sports or not, this is an easy, free touch. Okay. And it's basketball, hockey, all of it. They do this for everything. But if you go to cbssports.com and create an account, it's free. But during March Madness, they do brackets and you can invite all of your clients and your whole database to be a part of this bracket pool. The beautiful thing about this is it's marketing that you're not paying for. So I'll say 2021, 2022, whatever, um, March Ma uh, Lux Property Group March Madness bracket. All right. So, or Elizabeth Riley, Lux Property Group marketing or uh, uh, Ma March Madness bracket. The reason I do that, I name that is because now everybody sets up their brackets for free. I let them know there's going to be prizes for first, second, and third. And if you're a newer agent, it could be bragging rights. It can be a $5 gift, gift card to Starbucks. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, y'all. Okay. It's just the thought and it's the touch. And so even my clients that don't know anything about basketball, it's, I mean, that's the cool thing about March Madness, like underdogs and like score upsets and things like that. You never know who's going to win anyway. I mean, you could say Duke and they're out like the first round and it's like, okay, what happens? So the cool thing is every time there's a score change or a, an upset or an advancement or something, an email goes out to them, updating them on their bracket with your name on it every single time okay so they're like oh elizabeth okay like what's going on with the brackets and then at the very end i have first second and third prizes and, and i pick prizes based off who won so like last year or this year sarah won um i mean she knew nothing about basketball I was like do it anyway and she won so i got her a hundred dollar gift card to nordstrom and then my second place guy loves jake crew so i got him something there my third guy uh, loves craft beer. So I got him like this gift card to this pizza and craft beer place, right? Get to know your clients, what they like so that you can be more um, intentional when you're, when you're marketing to them. Um, or if you want to do something a little different, one thing I've done in the past is um, clip art. I just get a clip art of a four leaf clover and on a word document say, you don't need luck in real estate. You just need Elizabeth Riley on your team. And then I put a dollar gift card, a uh, dollar scratch off, right? And what's really cool is I got a $1.2 million client that he was like, hey, I won 20 bucks. Thanks for that. I was like, let's go grab coffee sometime. That's awesome. I haven't seen you in forever. And then we, I ended up listing his house a couple months later when he's like, yeah, we're thinking of selling, right? So it's just that touch, staying in touch with them. As you see, this is not real estate related. It's created it and it's, and it's clever and it's setting you apart from every other agent that's just sending, oh, just listed, just sold, right? All about me. Um, let me think. April, I'll try and go through all the months. Let's think. April, oh, you can easily go to Home Depot and get forget me not seeds. Okay, forget me not seeds. They're like 30 cents a package. Staple your business card to it, put it in an envelope. I get lots of calls on that going, okay, what are you sending me? It's rattling. It's kind of fun. They, they're afraid to open it because it's rattling because they don't know what to expect. Um, that's really inexpensive. Um, May, I mean, you there if you Google unique holidays. There's unique holidays throughout the year. One of my agents in Virginia, we were talking, I have my, my calls with my, my group every Friday morning, right before this. And um, she was like, oh yeah, it's ice cream, annual ice cream day or something. She's like, so we're doing a big ice cream social. Like, that's kind of fun, right? I didn't even know that it was ice, there was a day about ice cream, but whatever. Um, Mother's Day, uh, and it doesn't have to be just to mothers. It's like happy Mother's Day to uh, all the mothers or those that have mothers, you know, I mean, like you don't have to exclude anybody. Um, but for your clients, I've dropped off little bouquets of flowers on all my clients doors that, that are mothers that are my clients. Right. Um, it's building that relationship. Uh, July. Oh, uh, one thing I've done is I'll go to Oriental trading company. That's another one that has a lot of stuff that you can buy in bulk. And if you think about like Memorial day, 4th of July, and then labor day, right? Those are three that 
you don't necessarily want to do the same thing for all of them. So what I did in, in May was I put together how to fly the flag because there's these rules with how to fly the flag. And I had no idea about this. And you could put this really cool, like little um, on Canva or Vista print. They make it really easy. And you can put a plat flag and say, here's the rules to fly the flag, you know, and here are the flag dates. Um, and then I'd get this little pin that has two American flags and I put it on the, on the um, cardstock. And then I just mail it out to everybody. So now it kind of covers those three holidays and then they have a little flag pin i've had people that have said oh my gosh i love the flag pin can you give me extras absolutely my friends want them absolutely send me their address and i'll send it to them right and now they're in my database okay um some other things uh football is huge in texas i live in austin which is university of texas i actually went to the rival college texas a m university so I'm not going to send anything out with Texas, I mean, with the University of Texas. And what's funny is people will send things that have University of Texas, Baylor, and like U of H. Well, you're spending all this money sending that out. What if the people you're sending it to didn't go to any of those schools? I'm in the SEC. The University of Texas is in the Big 12. So what I've done is on Canva again, I um, get a eight and a half by 11 cardstock. On the front half, it says the Big 12, and it has all the little helmets. You guys have seen these helmets. Um, if you Google it, you can say uh, college football helmets, and it'll it'll bring up the whole schedule with all the little helmets in every game and every schedule that is, uh, is going to happen in that fall, right? And so I put the Big 12 helmet schedule in there, and then um, on the other side, I say SEC, and then I put the SEC schedule. The reason I do that now, anybody in the household that follows any of those games, they're not going to throw them away just because those aren't the schools that they follow. They're going to keep them because it's got the whole season. And so I put Lux Property Group, you know, when you're getting ready for the big game, think of, you know, Lux Property Group to be your winning team, to be a part of your winning team, right? Really, really easy. I put a stamp on that and I mail it just like that. I don't put it in an envelope. I just mail it. Um, and it's fun because the guys really like it. I go to people's houses and they've got it on the, on the refrigerator. I'm like, that's awesome because I'm adding value. It's not all about me. It's information that's going to be sticky and, and, and stay around a little bit longer. Um, let's see what else October. So that's August, September, really. Um, oh, October. I have fun because of the kids. Okay. So I will find things and I mail them to the kids. Now the fam, the parents know what you're doing. They, they're like, oh, wait, I, you got a letter. They see the letter. What's the letter? And it'll be something for the kids. So I'll go to the dollar store and I'll get a, um, I'll get a bunch of Halloween cards. Like you can get five for a dollar or something like that. Okay. Uh, and I'll get a whole bunch of Halloween cards and I'll go to Wendy's and Wendy's has the Frosties. And in October, Wendy's will do five for a dollar Frosties and they're all decorated Halloween. And then I know how many kids are in each family and I'll take the frosty gift cards for each member of the kid or each kid in the family. And I write a Halloween card to the kids. Hi, Megan and Justin. I hope you have a fantastic Halloween. Love your parents' favorite real estate agent, Elizabeth. Um, you know, enjoy a cool treat on me. And I send that to them. The kids get all excited. Like, oh, Miss Elizabeth, thank you. You know, we got your frosty, right? Um, or the parents will start taking pictures and they put it on social media and on stories. Cause they're like, Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. The kids love it. Whatever. Um, I've sent glow sticks in the mail before. Don't do that. That was very expensive. I didn't think about that. Um, or if you want to do glow sticks, go get glow sticks and drop them off at the doors. Right. Um, I will get pumpkin carving contest. <clears throat> you can get pumpkin carving kits at dollar tree or dollar store. And then I just staple a little contest on there. Okay. You need to carve your pumpkin by this date, post it on social media and tag Lux Property Group, and we're going to have first, second, and third prizes, right? So the kid, this all goes to the kids. I'll send one where it's, um, I can get the little tattoos from Oriental Trading Company again and send things out. So there's a lot of things you can do with the kids, but Halloween is really fun to really focus on. Oh, one thing I do, this is really fun. Any of my clients from the year before that closed on a home, any of my buyers that closed on a home from November 1st, probably until like October 15th, okay, right before Halloween, I go to Amazon and I buy um, 
you can buy cases. There are about 48 of them, candy bars, full-size candy bars in a case. And it's M&Ms, it's Snickers. It's like a whole mix of the good candy. And they're full-size candy bars. And I go into Amazon Prime. And for all of my buyers that have purchased, I send one of those to my clients right before Halloween. Um, happy, happy first Halloween in your new home. I hope this helps you to become the most popular home on the block because they're giving out like hand, big candy bars. All the kids are going to love that. All the parents are going to love that, right? So I send that directly to them. I'm not driving around town. Amazon Prime is free. I think the cases of them are like $13, right? So I do that for all my buyers every year. Um, November's easy, gratitude. I have, I will handwrite um, what I'm grateful for to each of my clients. Handwritten cards go a long way, y'all. Nobody does them anymore. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. It can say, hey, Lisa, I'm so grateful that I know you and that I was able to serve you and your real estate needs. And I'm just, whatever it is, um, during this time of Thanksgiving, I just want to let you know I'm grateful for you, right? It doesn't even have to be real estate related. It's just, I'm grateful for you. People want to be, they want to feel gratitude. And that's a handwritten card. I write lots of handwritten cards. Um, when you're going in Facebook, right? The three C's, compliment, console, and congratulate. Figure out who's doing what in Facebook. You can set that aside every morning. Like, okay, I'm going to spend 30 minutes on Facebook because you're catching up on everything, but then you're seeing what's going on with people. And, and instead of just doing a like or a heart on something, um, send a handwritten card. If somebody's dog died, don't do a, a sad face. Send a note in the mail. Hey, John, I saw that your dog died. I'm so sorry. I was thinking about you. Just wanted to let you know. Right? Send a note. Um, uh, graduation's going on right now. And I'm going through and I'm seeing all my clients and friends, not even just my clients, but people in my database with all their kids graduating. I went and got a whole bunch of gift cards to Amazon and I sent Amazon gift cards to every kid, whether it was my client or not, every kid um, that was graduating, right? Because it's building that relationship. So find ways to console, congratulate um, or compliment and just do a handwritten note instead of a simple heart or like or whatever. Um, November, I've also done, this one's a little expensive, where I go to Starbucks and I buy two $5 gift cards per client, not one $10, but two. And I'll do like a cornucopia picture or something and say, I'm just so grateful for you. Go enjoy a cup of coffee on me and, and pay it forward and take somebody you're grateful for to coffee as well. So then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm taking my, my real estate agent is you know, doing the coffee and I just wanted to thank you. So it's conversations like that. Um, in the summer, oh, I've done this, especially with COVID, when we're all shelter in place, right? Everybody's going crazy. But on Canva, you can get, um, I, I did a card with lemons. And it said, are your four walls giving you the squeeze? And on the back, it said something like, let the Lux Property Group make lemonade out of lemons. And I got the Kool-Aid lemonade packs that you can get on Amazon or wherever. And I put one of those in each envelope. And so I got tons of online love with that because all the parents were like, oh my gosh, thank you. We needed an activity. We're all stuck in the house and they're all like making lemonade. Thank you, Elizabeth and whatever. Um, and then when everybody went, went uh, shelter in place and school from home, everybody was freaking out. Remember the cameras, you know, everybody's freaking out. Okay, are the, the, these people gonna see my kids and you know, that security thing. We went to or um, Oriental Trading Company and we got the little camera covers that cover your computer camera, right? And on one side, it said something like Zoom from home, work from home, school from home, do it all from home. The Lux Property Group has you covered. And we put our Lux Property Group brand on it. And so all these parents were like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much, because they were worried about the security for their kids. Right. It was a legitimate need that we were we were addressing. Uh, and so that's probably the most one where people are reaching out going, can I get more of those? Can you send these to my friends? And we added a ton of people to the database just because we were anticipating a need before people really thought about it. Um, and then December, oh, every December, I, instead of gifts, so all of my clients are different religions, different um, beliefs, different whatever. And everybody gets bombarded during the holiday season um, with 
wreaths or coffee or candy or junk, I don't know, whatever. So instead of doing that, I never want to exclude anybody. I want to always include somebody. So, and I never want to offend. So I choose a charity every single year. It's usually somebody local and it's usually somebody that one of my clients is involved with. Um, but every single year I will find a charity and I will make a donation into the name of all of my, into that charity in the name of all my clients and friends. And so what I do, and this is beautiful too, because nobody knows how much you're spending. So if you're a new agent and you say, okay, I've got $10, great, $10, take it to, so I'm on the board for Partnership for Children. So we'll use that. Give $10 to Partnership for Children, write a check, write a letter to them saying, thank you for everything you do for the community. Um, in lieu of gifts this holiday season, I'm making a donation in the name of the following people. I only put their names. I don't put their addresses, okay? In the following people, um, thank you for everything you do, whatever. And then, so now this happens. Now you have a write-off. Now you've donated to a charity. Now the charity knows what you're doing. And then I get cards on Canva or Vistaprint. And I say in lieu of holiday, uh, in lieu of gifts this holiday season, a donation has been made in your name to Partnerships for Children with the website. Thank you for your continued support and referrals. Happy holidays, Elizabeth. Okay, and I send those out. They don't know how much, and I get handwritten notes every single year from clients saying, I love that you do this. Thank you for the donation in my name. That could be a dollar, but they don't know what the value is. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that you thought of them and did something good, right? Um, so that's a big thing I do every, every single December. So that's kind of a lot of ideas. And then I know we're running out of time, but, um, the electronic newsletter, I'm getting away from that. I think because a lot of them go into spam, everybody's bombarded with newsletters now, and everybody's bombarded with, with, um, emails. And quite frankly, I don't have the time to focus on it the way I want. So I haven't been doing those. So I'm really kind of doing more of the 24 touches instead of 36. Um, and don't beat yourself up about it. Just have grace. If you miss a month, you, you miss a month. Okay, that's fine. Just pick it up where you left off. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, I'll reach out to my clients. Hey, I was in your neighborhood or I was thinking about you. Let's go grab coffee or lunch. Um, let me know. And I have a list of all of my clients in my car and I just voice text. Uh, or there's an app called Reach that I use and I can put all of my clients in different groups. So I can say active clients, past clients, my downline. And so I could say the same message. I could type one message and say, Lisa, uh, was thinking about you. I'd love to grab coffee or lunch with you. And then I can send that to everybody in that group that I want, but it goes to them individually. So they don't know. And I do this with my downline a lot, right? They don't know. I'm like, hey, I'm just here to support you. What's going on? I haven't talked to you. I just want to make sure you're doing okay. Um, so I only have to type it once and I don't forget anybody because they're in that group and reach is free up to a certain number of contacts. Um, so that's what I use as well. So talking really fast right now, because I want to give time for questions, but Lisa, is that helpful? What I've been sharing? Does that give you guys some ideas? Oh my gosh. So many ideas. I've been scribbling notes. I'm on page three already. So um, yeah, we're definitely going to want to make sure we, we kind of summarize. Yeah. I think there are some questions and I just want um, number one, how many now you've been in business for a very long time and you know, we acknowledge that and you do a huge amount of business. 70 transactions is nothing to sneeze at. But in that, you know, when you're doing your, your 24, um, you know, your 12, 24, 36, how many are you talking about? Give us some sense of that. And then the other big question, which people may have is, how much time are you spending on this girlfriend? I mean, I, <laughs> like, yeah. I just, my throat continues to close thinking about all of this. <laughs> yeah, I get, I've been getting overwhelmed a lot lately because I say comparison kills joy, but I say it for all of you, but I also say it for myself because I'm looking at like social media and all these other things. And that's not my strength. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to do this stuff. So, um, but I can't do everything. And so I just hired a marketing assistant to handle social media because I could care less about mo social media, but I know that it's important. So I'm like, just go whatever you need to do there. Um, so I have about 350 people that I can, that I have in my group. That's not a whole lot, right? Um, now I have other, now, now keep in mind, I don't have all their contact information. So you have to meet them where they are. If you only have their email information, then you're going to have to make sure you're touching them in a unique way, right? Or a different way, or, hey, I'm sending out my, my coupon to you, right? Until you get their information. If I don't have their address, I'll usually go into tax records and try to get their addresses. Um, I used to never take people out of my database, but I am now like it happens. People will use somebody else 
I'm like, okay, I'm not going to spend money on that. And who knows what the reason was, but I'm going to take them out of my database. So really I only have about 350. I need to add to that. But if you have the right 350 people, they're going to be your cheerleader. I, I closed five deals from real, from um, referrals from one couple that never bought a house from me. They did finally, but they believed in me and they knew me. So you know, I don't want to say, well, you bought a house from me, but you haven't. So I'm not going to market to you. Right. You want to love your referrals and make people aware. And everybody thinks like, like I always want people to see me. So if I'm at my kid's school and I'm really involved in my kid's school, um, I want, I don't want them to see me and say, oh my gosh, there's trips, mom run. She's going to talk to you about real estate. Okay. Cause we know those people, but I want them all to know who I am and what I do. So I'm very, very passive. So I'll include them. If they opt out, they opt out. I usually, my, my mailings and stuff, they don't usually opt out. So um, if you're adding content, but it doesn't have to be that many. So I have about 350 and that's over 17 years, 350. I really focus on um, my neighborhood. We moved here a few years ago. One day, my son said, mom, I saw three signs in our neighborhood. Does that make you mad? And I go, Actually, it's my own fault. And it was, an, it was an aha moment to me. I was like, they don't know who I am. I'm a secret agent. I'm telling everybody not to be a secret agent, but nobody knows who I am. So um, we started doing right before COVID. I haven't done it yet, but Front Porch Fridays, get all the neighbors, right? You live here, you work here. And so I sent a, ne- a letter to all the neighbors saying, hey, we moved here. This is who we are, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I'm building those relationships right now. So I'll add them all to my database too, but just think about ways to do that. If you're a brand new agent, make sure everybody knows you're in real estate. This is what I would do. This is what I did in two states, okay? I wrote a letter, hey, I got in real estate. I'm super excited. This is what's going on with me. And I put it on a Word document. Do not send your business card. Send it to them, email it to them, text them, whatever, but don't send your business card. And then three weeks later, here's a second touch. You now write them a handwritten card Hey, I hope you got my letter. I'm super excited. This has been great. I wanted to share a few business cards. My business cards just came in. I wanted to share a few business cards. If you ever know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I'd be honored to work with them. And then you put like two or three business cards in there. Don't do that the first time around. You want an excuse to touch them and then start touching them. Um, And as far as timing, it just depends on, and Lisa, because I logged out, I I have a few minutes past um, the hour if you need me to. Um, And because... If you plan in advance, if you're proactive, then you then it works a lot better throughout the year unless you're being reactive. So I would say it's June right now. Plan the rest of the six months. Plan the rest of the year out in the month of June, because if you get to July, you're like, oh, my gosh, it's busy. I can't do it. You're not going to do anything. And that's how you aren't going to be consistent. So consistency is the key. I don't care what you send out. Consistency. Yeah, absolutely. And we, Barbara Legg and I do, um, we're both facilitators and we do some uh, some work with Brian Buffini and so many of the things that you were saying, I know Barbara was going, that's a Popeye, that's a great Popeye. Yeah. So uh, there's actually a great website called popbyeideas.com, which we've been, you know, sharing with people and we actually did a, a, a mastermind with that gal. But that's, you know, that's part of really what you're doing is that whole, you know, that, that, that touch piece. I know Barbara, you want to uh, un- unmute, Barb had a really great question. Sure. Yeah, I got to jump up at, at nine or, or maybe 9.05. I'll try to stretch it. But I just was wondering, so I know, I mean, real estate's crazy. So your daily routine, or at least your morning routine, how do you get yourself set up, especially in the morning for a successful day? What do you do? Yeah, I hate that question because I'm a hot mess when it comes to that, but I'll just be transparent. Like, I don't know. I mean, I've got four kids. My little one, will, it depends on when she'll wake me up and it's just like, okay, so what I do the night before is I look at my calendar so I can mentally prepare, okay, what time do I need to get on here? Uh, like, do I have to get up at this time or do I have to get up before my kids do so I can shower, right? So the night before I look at my calendar so I know what to expect the next day. Um, and then the next morning I just get up and I've got the kids. Now, full transparency, because of EXP, I was able to um, retire my husband last year. So my husband's been a huge help and I have a house manager. She's been my nanny, but she's kind of, she's my house manager. She does all the laundry. She does all the cleaning and all those other things. So I have a lot more help than most people would. Um, So, and it's very hard, but I've been blessed because my husband can get the kids moving. And if I have a crazy morning, he can get them moving, get them breakfast, whatever we need to do. Um, But I just, depends on what my day is. My day is different every single day. Um, I teach in the world a lot. I have I time block. I'm starting to time block better. And I realize I'm a lot more settled when I time block 
time block versus when I'm not time blocking because things come up. Um, and I'm not trying to be everything for everybody because people would call me out of the blue and I want to help. So I'd answer knowing that I'm focused on what this is. And a lot of times I can answer those questions, but what I'm starting to do now is that's a great question. Ask it in the world in this group. I mean, uh, in workplace in this group, I'll answer it there because if you have that question, others might as well, right? So I'm trying to stay focused on what I'm doing and not be distracted. And I'm trying to turn my phone upside down because otherwise I'll go in different directions. So my days are, are very, very different. And that's why I love real estate because not every day is the same. Can I ask one more question? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Three things you would recommend a brand new agent to do. Just three. Like Definitely make your database and write and make sure everybody you know knows what you're doing. Okay. Whether it's in your city, in your state, in the country, I don't care. Send it to everybody. Make your list. I don't care what database you use. The best database out there is the one you use. For, for years, I used an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Just get that information somewhere. Name address, phone number, email, and, and fill it out as, as much as you can and write your, write your letter and stop getting ready to get ready. Just do it. Okay. Um, number two, don't make, don't spend money till you're making it fine. Right. If you have a new listing, um, great. But if you don't have a listing, don't go buy a lockbox. I have a bunch of my agents that just borrow mine. I'm like, don't go spend money on lockbox. It's just borrow mine. I've got them. Right. So, um, get, familiar with the people in your area, connect, show up and plug in with EXP and get to know those people that are in your area because they're, whether they're in your organization or not, we're all here to help each other. We're all owners of this company. So when we all succeed, everybody succeeds. Okay. So don't spend money till you're making it and just really rely on the people you're, you're involved in. Um, and I would say, make sure you're plugging into the training and and I'm doing in-person stuff. So if there's not something that, that you're interested in or there's not something available to you, start it. Just because you're a new agent doesn't mean you don't have great ideas. Reach out to other new agents in your area and say, hey, can we create an accountability group? Can we grab coffee once a month? Let's talk about in-person what we're doing. Because I think what's great is our virtual world, but I love in-person and I feel like we can get a lot more done that way. And so if, if the opportunity is not there, create it realize you've got a lot more power and control than you think, even though you're brand new. Um, one more thing I would say is shadow somebody, right? If you look into your market and you're like, hey, I really want to be a luxury agent or I've got this listing, I don't know what to do, shadow somebody or partner with somebody and learn from them. Don't try to do it yourself. Amazing. Those are amazing nuggets. This has been so great, Elizabeth. I can't wait. Very excited to know I will see you in the next day or two in Orlando for shareholders. Uh, hopefully the other people on the call are going to be attending as well. Um, you guys, I've just, you know, blown away. I know that um, Raymar is going to do uh, a little bit of editing and we'll get this back out to everybody. Uh, Elizabeth, you, if you would like the video, you know, love to share it with you, but sure. you are just such uh, an absolute uh, beacon of, of great energy and light. And we so appreciate knowing you and your generosity and your willingness to come on and share with us this morning. Anytime. I'm honored that you asked. So thank you all. And um, if I can ever help work out, uh, find me on Workplace Chat. And if you are at shareholders next week, I would love to meet you. Um, little bit of family communication issue on my end that I'm having to bring my two daughters now. So uh, you'll see me with my nice. girls. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So you have, like, the, you have something on Tuesday, I believe. What, so what, what are you gonna be sharing at, at shareholders? You're in that. So X Camp, make sure you go to X Camp. X yes, Camp is course. amazing, y'all. That's uh, Monday morning. I'm, I'm speaking at X Camp, I'm sure. They always have me speak on attraction. Usually with Jean, I don't know if Jean will be there in time. Um, I'm speaking Tuesday, and then I'm at, I'm speaking a general session on Tuesday. To, I don't know. I just when I get there, I literally take one day at almost one hour at a time. When I get there, I'll figure it out. But um, it's going to be take your daughters to work week, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, I can't wait! I can't wait! I'm sure they'll be at the pool. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they will be. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Everybody is is throwing in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Nice this to meet you all. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.